Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking the time. I'm uh, excited to see some new people joining us for our webcast series. My name's David, and I'm sitting here with Gary Green, who will be on screen shortly. Hello, everybody. All right. So just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, there's a QA function on your uh, Zoom panel. Please feel free to ask us questions specific to any kind of product. Uh, there's also a chat function. If you guys can't hear us, just let us know. You can also ask questions there. We'll follow up with a link for, for, uh, just for the video if you guys want to watch after here and reference any of the material. And uh, without further ado, Gary Green, President, uh, Innovator in Chief, Screen Tight. I appreciate everybody being here. I know that uh, you got a busy day and a lot of work to get done. So thank you for uh, tuning in. And hopefully this is not this is beneficial and um, helps you get your projects done on time and the right way. So interested in all your questions and comments. So let's get started, buddy. Okay, you want me to run? Yep, just, uh, we just want to kind of give a quick hit. We didn't do a whole lot of practicing before we got here this morning. So anyway, Screen Tight, um, quick little history. Our original product is called Screen Tight. It's a, it was one of the first systems that replaced the old fashioned way of stapling up screen and putting wood strips over what you'd staple up. Um, screen Tight, the original systems installed in well over a million homes. Uh, we make it every day and we have for 25 plus years and it's still in every country, I mean, sorry, every state and many countries. Um, of course, we have other systems as well and I'll go through those. Go back to that last slide. Um, some newer systems, of course, is MeshGuard. MeshGuard it came from our customer's feedback, just like you. Um, the customer didn't necessarily like the code official saying you got to have a picket there and um, so always had that kind of in the back of our mind how can we do that and not have the pickets and we tried a few different things we tried a very stiff metal mesh and it just didn't you had to have different parts that held the metal mesh in it ultimately it could dent possibly um, so then we decided and what if we could come up with a system where we utilized um, the same mechanism of screen type you have a base track and then of course you have the the cap that would snap onto it. So we experimented with several different ways again and uh, figured out that, of course, the flat spline worked better. Uh, it's more of a mechanical lock that holds the screen versus um, a friction fit. And But the, the problem that we had with that when we went to do our testing was very often the day strip, which you see right here, would come loose from the wood. And so we had to come up with a solution for that. And that was very simply, a piece of steel that worked like a, a washer that went into the base strip. And of course you put your screw in there to hold that to your wood. And it, it helps keep secure the base to the wood uh, frame that you put up there. The other question is what kind of mesh are we going to use? And we, again, we didn't really like the solid or the rigid metal mesh. And so we looked into several different, um, types of meshes. Fiberglass, we didn't feel like it was strong enough. We looked into a polyester mesh. Uh, went through several different vendors. We found one that we really liked that had a different little of a sheen to it, a special sheen that matches up with the fiberglass screen. So when you have the mesh guard mesh right below the um, traditional fiberglass mesh, you really can't tell the difference up close or far away. And that was one of our um, goals that we wanted to have. Uh, we had to get um, ICC testing and what we found out there was um, we didn't have any trouble we we went it took a while to figure out how to actually do the testing because it was one of the first and probably the first item that was beyond the traditional method of doing taking care of the infill um, and we uh, forget the poundage um, but anyway we exceeded that in every test and um, received that certification about a year ago you can see here, but typically the limitation is you don't want to go past a six foot wide opening. Um, typically, we our mesh guard screen is 42 inches, so you can go up to 40 inches fairly easy. 
The other thing that's uh, maybe it hasn't been conveyed as well as I'd like to, I had a job um, a couple of weeks ago on a friend of mine's house, and they were using screen tight up top. And screen tight uses a round spline. And what they didn't realize is that the base strips, let me see if I take that off, the flat spline and the base strips can mesh together. And so on the horizontal rail, they had, let's say it was like this. Well, and they were actually doubled up and wanted to put the original screen type base here and then the mesh guard base here. Well, that's not necessary. You just simply, you had the round spine here and had the flat spine on the top and the bottom here. And that, that worked great. It was easy. Once the installers figured it out, hey, here's how you do it, they sailed ahead and did a great looking job. Um, let's see. We talked about how it meshes with the regular screen tight, um, and obviously on the cost issues, um, you know, it's a whole lot easier and less expensive to use our system than building up a bunch of pickets on my house with the pickets. Ultimately, the pickets become an issue. They, the nails over time rust, you have to replace the pickets, you have to paint them, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a much cleaner, easier way to do it. This image that you're seeing right here, this is a home in Mount Pleasant. Um, the architect, design these what I call cross bucks, uh, kind of like the X's that you see below the mid rail. The problem was it, it couldn't meet code the way they had it that way. So what they were having to do is either put a cable in there. In this particular case, the cable didn't look quite right with those, um, with those cross bucks. So what they did is they took plexiglass and or acrylic and put up over it, which didn't look that great. And so when we came along with this product, uh, the architect became aware of it and said, boy, that's the solution we've been looking for. And here you go. Um, and incidentally, the house that I recently did at Paul's had that same type of cross buck look to it. But it, what, what the system does, it allows you to kind of put whatever architectural detail you want in there. Um, wider, you know, wider pickets, for example, or a horizontal um, one by six. You can kind of really mix it up and not be limited to just a six by six or four by four inch square. Anything on mesh guard? You want to move the screen wall? Um, you know, I would say from the jobs that I've seen, the installation goes pretty well. We, we're aware of some things to make it better and we'll continue to do that. Um, the good news about mesh guard is this screen tight is in a lot of homes and this is a way to come back and utilize the system that's there to kind of improve what you already have when you use screen type. And of course, it's great for new homes as well. So I think we can move on. Yeah. Um, screen wall. So if you go down into the markets um, of Florida, you'll see they use a lot of aluminum enclosure systems. Um, they call it patio products there. And there's a lot of different ways, different names for it. But, but typically it's structural members that are, are somewhat structural, one by twos and two by two um, framing and it's always aluminum and it's been used down there for, for decades. You'll see these large pool cages that use the aluminum systems as well. Um, we, we looked into, well, what, what could you do to um, make the connectors less noticeable? Uh, could you use a PVC? Well, the answer to using a PVC was quickly evident um, and, and that's the obvious reason nobody's ever done it. Typically a PVC profile is flexible. You can bend it, as you see right there. So what we did, um, and it's got part of a bigger picture, how can we get that PVC two by two, for example? So if you're looking at the profiles at the bottom of your screen, you'll see you can tell which one's the two by two and the one by two, there are two in the middle. Um, what we call the two by two the post, the perimeter, which is the one by two, is just that. It goes around the perimeter, and the post is designed just to um, attach right to it. But the, the post is where you get all the wind, or where you get all the, um, the stress and so on. So if you just put a two by two up there and you didn't have any strength or anything, it was made out of PVC, when the wind blows, again, it's gonna, it's gonna do this, it's gonna bend, it's gonna be pliable, too pliable. And so part of what we've worked on for years and finally have come up with a solution for this profile, but a lot of different PVC profiles, is we developed a process, where we'll put a fiber, I think you can see it better on this, this end, we put a fiber inside the profile here and here. So what that does, the way we orient it, it, it works like an I-beam. So you've got um, one in compression and one in tension. 
compression and tension, depending on which way the wind is blowing. And it makes this post, or this particular two by two, very, very stiff. And we did the testing in Florida. Um, we are very pleased with what we found out. We, we, the testing was what I kind of um, refer, refer to as R, R, redneck R&D sometimes. They took an airplane prop, they blew the wind at uh, up to 150 miles an hour. And you can see our part bend at that maximum speed. But once the, the prop let off, it went right back to where it was. And as you can imagine, if that was aluminum, it would have set. If it bent, it would have stayed bent. And so the product worked great. Again, the way the product is set up, uh, if you can go some pictures of the fasteners. It's all internal clips. Um, you don't see uh, any of the fasteners. It's all hidden inside the profile. Um, if you see what's called the pros bracket, if you look, um, we don't have a picture showing the close detail of how it all snaps in the video. Um, and you, you can look at the video and you'll see the way all that just kind of, you'll see that screw, that's the clip and it's lined up where that little piece right there goes down in that groove so you keep it aligned the exact way you want to it. You pre-drill, right now the perimeter strips are not pre-drilled everywhere, that's something we're, we plan on doing. Um, and then those clips go on there and there's what we call a beauty cap that snaps over that, that hides all those screws and those clips. Um, and it, again, it, it meets the um, requirements for the wind load, et cetera. It gives it a nice clean look. It really does. It's a great product and we anticipate that that product's going to have continuing growing sales. Recently, we, uh, we had a, one of the national builders that um, was building a project in Myrtle Beach. It always used aluminum and they saw our product and said, hey, can we do a job out of it? We, we did. We helped the installer do a job and uh, I think in the last two weeks they've done as many as 10 more. So it's, it's catching on and uh, it's a, again, it's a great looking project a great looking product and you can do very large openings with it as well so very pleased with that product um, hopefully more to come as with all of our products if um, you can't find it we can get it for you all you have to do is just call our office and we'll make sure you get the product um, what you want to go to next one so we just have some um, and we can bounce around but we have some questions okay. on just kind of how to how to decide we have six systems how do I decide which one's right for my project <clears throat> Okay, I've heard that question many times. So if you have an existing porch and it's already framed up with wood, I, I believe screen tight is probably the best way to go. Because all you've got to do is just attach it to your existing framing. Um, if you, um, what, whether it be our fast track system or our screen wall system, um, and you don't want any wood at all, both of those systems are great for that particular application. Uh, or if you have just a wall, and then you want to maybe two sides of that porch um, are not screened and only one side is, it's a great way to do it. If you on screen wall are um, fast track. Fast track, fast track is a similar system to screen wall, but it's made out of aluminum. It's got hidden fasteners as well. And it, it the, the aluminum attaches to a clip type system. Um, but, and then going to um, mini track, what we found with mini track, it works great on openings that, uh, particularly if you have a very high up opening and it's very difficult to work from the exterior, or if you prefer a low profile. Mini track only has a, a three quarter by three quarter inch profile. One thing about fast track and mini track um, that you don't have to worry about, one of the differences between this and say a screen wall system. Screen wall at this point comes in one color and, and you're looking at it, it's white. Um, and, and that's to do mostly with PVC and making it it's difficult to have the darker colors. The aluminum systems, whether it be mini track or fast track, and that's this system, uh, right now it's white and brown, and within the next uh, 60 days we'll have black as well and just kind of start extending, extending those colors out there. So that might answer your question a little bit about which system is best for you as well. Mesh guard, um, Keep in mind, mesh guard, it can be used for your whole porch, but typically it's just used to the bottom. It is a more expensive mesh. Um, the, the other components are a little bit more expensive as well. So it's typically used just on the bottom rail or below the bottom rail where you don't have, want to have to have pickets. Does that answer that question? It sure does. And, and that's a question we've heard a thousand times. So. Okay. Um, you're asking about the how large of an opening can you have? I, I, I can just go by my personal experience. 
Um, we have a farmhouse that's up on a lake and it's, it gets a lot of heavy wind blowing into it. Um, I installed that screen myself um, on screen tight. I believe in 2002 um, and the openings are as large as, um, I believe they're like 12 by 10, they're very, very large. And um, I've never had to replace any of it. Um, on the other hand, um, I've had smaller openings right in an area that gets more wind, say at the top of a mountain or um, Nax Head, North Carolina, or, or somewhere that gets high, heavy, um, tropical storm type winds exceeding 100 and whatever. Um, you might not want to do as large of openings. So the limitation typically is mostly the size of the availability of the screen for one thing that you can get, which we also, if you can't get the larger rolls or wider rolls of screen, we have those available. Um, but also the um, the configuration of your porch. If it you know if architecturally, if you prefer to have five foot wide openings and or ten foot wide openings, you know those are kind of your limitations there. But you can go wider. But geography and your kind of local conditions does provide you some um, limitations. Recently, um, a friend was doing a porch. It was um, on a beach. It got high winds. He wanted large openings, very large. You know maybe. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, but it was every bit of 12 feet wide and say six feet tall. Um, being on the front beach, my suggestion to him was, let's try it, let's see how it works. And if if later on it's, we find out it's too big, it's not that difficult to come back in and put a, another vertical and, and make it a smaller opening. So. Vicki has a question real quick. Um, what's the best way to attach the stone, not a smooth surface? Um, you know, it kind of depends on the product, so I'll run through it quickly. Let's just say yours in screen tight. Um, you would just take, you would take your two, what's two by four wood framing. You would attach that. I'll call this the the rough surface, and it's going to be rough. So in between that area and that gap, then of course you would just caulk it in or something. Um, I and that is similar to an aluminum system as well. So if if you are putting um, if you're putting screen wall up or fast track up and it's going up to a, a vertical surface that's not even, I, I think you need to fur it out with something. And typically that's going to be done with perhaps wood or you can also get like a PVC foam board or trim board and put that up first. But you're going to have some gaps in there and ultimately you got to either caulk it in or fill it in no matter what you do. Uh, another job that I was involved in recently used, um, we got the perimeter of, uh, Screen wall. Um, the perimeter of the screen wall was going over a brick surface on the bottom of the patio. And the brick surface was up and down between the mortar of the bricks and some of the bricks weren't just perfect. And again, it was the same, so it was very similar to this part, going on to a surface like this. And so that was, but it was imperfect. So what we did, we used um, the bolts that went into the cement. And then of course there was some caulking at the surface right here. So it's not unusual to do that. Um, it, it, part of it depends on how um, rough that surface is, what the size gaps there are. To be looking for Where was that? <laughs> um, is your porch close to the ocean? Um, choose a PV system with 100% faster when you're talking about um, screen wall. Is yeah, just some of the corrosive qualities and why aluminum, maybe not. Yeah, the best so. Idea. Um, I live at Pauley's Island in South Carolina, and if you would get salt air um, on everything, it seems like, including my vehicles, and and rusting is an issue, uh, corrosion is an is issue. I have um, aluminum clad windows in my house, and I've seen that white, what I call the white rust on there. That's why we found that the, the screen wall system is really, really gaining popularity coastal areas of Florida, like the Keys, and et cetera, because they, they get a lot of salt water. So um, again, this is a perfect solution for that. I, ironically, um, like in the Keys, we we don't sell much as much in the enclosure items, the aluminum systems, as we do, we sell more screen tight down because they're using wood and they understand they're gonna get a lot of corrosion. But again, with the, if you're in that type of environment, this is a great way to go. And of course, you put screen tight up as well and it's not going to rust. And if you do that, then you want to get the best screws that you can get that are non-corrosive. 
We get this question a lot on the website. Um, people ask if they can put the mesh guard screen in the in their original screen tight track that they already have on their porch, and if it would work like screen tight. So, just the uh, difference. Yeah, you, all it is is so the the mesh guard screen. It's just a thicker woven mesh, and it's like there's a different material, but it's just thicker. So, if you think about this, so the groove is the same if you're using it on a regular screen tight. Um, and so you just use a, a, a thinner spline. But if you do that, it's, it's not gonna meet that criteria of performing like mesh guard as far as being an alternative to pickets and so on. So to answer the question about pickets, if, that, if that's where that is leaning towards, you pretty much need the, the base with the flat spline and you need that steel strip and you need that particular mesh. And all our materials, and this is part of the ICC testing, they wanted to prevent substitution. So that's where you'll see the, the mesh has got an orange code to it somewhere. You can't see it on this piece. Um, the steel strips are marked. The spline is actually marked as well with like a safety orange strip on there. Can mesh guard be used to stand alone alternative pick? Absolutely. No question about that. So it can just mount below a handrail. Yeah, absolutely. And okay. if you look at that picture behind me, you'll you'll see that's the way it was used. Um, that's what it's intended for. Okay. We get this one a lot as well on uh, specialty screens. Um, and do our systems right. are they compatible? It's um, it's very you know quick answers yes they're all compatible, and that's where you would bury the diameter of the spline. So if you're using a thicker screen. In this case, a PET screen is a thicker screen. You would use a smaller diameter spline. Same thing for super screen. That's a polyester screen. Um, you would, uh, again, you would do the same thing, smaller diameter. So instead of using like a 0.175, which is what you would use on screen tight, you'd use like a 0.160. And on all those are, those different diameters are, are available here, but they're also available anywhere that you're buying screen tight or screen, typically they're, their stock, those different diameters. Okay, uh, David wants to enclose this porch when it gets cold. <laughs> uh, we do have a product called Screen Block. It's a new product. It's uh, basically a two by two. It goes inside your opening and it's designed to hold either screen or screen and a pliable PVC film um, or both. Um, and I'm looking for a drawing of it. Um, we have anything it for you. And a lot we'll of people ask, show you. the dual channels of Fast Track hold that film as well. Correct? Yeah, so we, um, and Dave is right, you can use Fast Track, for example, and if you notice, it's got two grooves on there, here and here, okay? And, and these two grooves, these two parts, and I don't have another one, they snap together, but you can also roll a, a film into that as well. And the film typically is, as you see right here, very, Clear film, it's got high clarity, it's similar to what you see in restaurants where they have an outdoor dining area and they want to extend the, the dining season um, and even into the colder weather type months. Um, this is the same concept. So you can extend your porch and, and kind of winterize it a little bit. Going back to Fast Track, you can, one of the, this system, instead of having two parts, you got one. They're symmetrical, it's the same part. And basically they, they snap together, like you see right here. So it goes from being a perimeter part to being a perimeter part and a um, vertical part and horizontal part just by their snapping together and those two parts become one. What's your next question? Uh, is it code compliant for second story porches? Yes. It is, okay. um, not beyond third, um, but it is up to second floor um, with no problems. Right. Um, I, you know, again, um, it gives you flexibility. Um, it is code compliant, it works. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with putting another rail down there if you'd like. Um, if you go back to some of those pictures we showed earlier where they had the cross buck in there, they wanted something, some, something more visual than just screen there and you could do it, otherwise you couldn't do that. And that's what I'm referring to. What about colors? Okay, 
screen tight. There's four different colors for the cap. Um, by, by far the most popular is white. Of course, the cap snaps on to the base strips, like you see, like you should see right here. Um, here. And there's four different colors of that, white, beige, gray, and brown. So you have the same colors um, for your mesh guard products as well. While I'm thinking about that, so I have an application. So that application I was telling you about earlier where the product had been up for since 2002 with very, very large app uh, openings. Um, it, was, it was more of a cabin type structure. And I really didn't want white up there. Uh, there was, it was all, all the wood we never painted, it's just natural wood. So what I did with that, and I don't have a sample to show you, we'll make sure to have it next, is I used the base strips, but then I, the house was made out of cedar, then I ripped cedar strips and I put right over and let that use let that be my cap. So that's an alternative for, as well. If you have a environment where you, you or a house where you don't want any um, stark colors on there or it doesn't match your color, you can always use a wood strip as well. Um, the key to that is you want to screw that wood strip on so that when you do have to replace screen and you always have to replace screen at some point, it's easy to do. You just unscrew that wood strip, re-roll it, and, and off you go. Going to the other products, um, I mentioned earlier, screen walls, one color, white. Um, Fast Track is brown or bronze and white, and we're adding a new color, black, and the same thing for many tracks. Screen block is always white. Need help planning your porch. That's David, by the way, ah. the picture. Um, you know, we, we added a resource this year. We have what we call a project pro. And the project pro's job is to help navigate you through the questions like which system is best for me, how far apart can I have my openings, just some things that maybe you haven't thought of and maybe just need a little bit of guidance on. So you can actually go to our website, set up an appointment to meet with David, the project pro, or his assigns, and uh, figure out the best ways to do your porch. So that's a resource that we'd like for y'all to use. and. Um, we're happy to, to add that to our kind of toolbox to help you, our customers, figure, figure the right way to screen your porch. And also to that, as far as building our resource library, in addition to any kind of live support, we're building our library of assets. Uh, I know there's a couple of architects uh, attending today. Um, so we're building that library as well. And if you need something specific, please let us know. In that regards, particularly to architects, we'd, We'd love your feedback. What do you need? What what can we provide you that helps you um, learn more about screen tight or specify screen tight? Um, we would like to know. We have an internal debate about what's the best way to do that. So um, you guys know more than we do. We'd love to get your feedback on that. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, that concludes our session for today. Any closing? Well, actually, we've got a couple more questions. Hold on. Um, let's see here. We've got the stone question from uh, from Vicky. Let's see. And then screen block. Yeah, so Vicky's asking uh, screen block you use once and done. Is it once and done, or can you reuse the screen block each season? The, the, the screen block, which again is a two by two. Um, profile it stays there all the time what does come up and come down is that clear plastic so you're probably wondering can you use that clear plastic over and over again um, you definitely can if you cut it too short it might be more difficult personally um, I think it would, the answer is yes and no some of it you can use without any problem but more than likely you're going to order a roll big enough that when the, a section gets ripped or torn or you cut it too close that you just kind of roll it right back in there so I hope that answers that, Vicki. All right, any closing thoughts? Um, my closing thought, number one, is always we appreciate your business and time. Um, your feedback is really important to what we're doing here. We, we feel like we are an innovative company, and the best ideas I have ever gotten came from our customers. So we want to hear what you're thinking and what you're doing. And um, for anything you buy from us, we really do appreciate it. You're number one in this company. Thank you.